Hmm. I don't know yet. Nera Badato. You there? Have you seen Laro Badato? Madiko, where is that spoiled brat? A woman in fine clothes clutches a ledger in both hands. She searches the faces of passers-by, settling on yours with an uncertain frown. What seems to be the problem? Laro is past due for a company meeting. Mother wants me to drag the elusive louse back by his ear. She tucks the book under her arm. Must be nice to be a layabout. Uncle Langbert would have tanned my hide. Fuck. I am angry and jealous in equal measure. You'd think this district was a maze, the way he manages to hide. He glances over your shoulder and sighs, then looks back at you with sudden recognition. The spirit magnet? Sientere, that I did not recognize you. If you desire to get in the graces of the Valian Trading Company, we can help each other. Hmm. What sort of cloud do you have with the trading company? Mother's Bank commands the wealth of the Deadfire campaign. Nera absently pats the cover of her ledger. Could I persuade you to watch out for Laro? I'd pay generously for your trouble. Mm -hmm. I take your mother as someone important. It's Ali Bardato. The Valiant Trading Company leans on her to finance their mission. If only more of her offspring were as accomplished. Nera raises her face, uh, her free hand, and squeezes the fridge of her mouth. Okay. <laughs> if I uh, happen across Laro, I'll let you know. Would you? I'll be waiting at the estate in case he happens to return. There are thumbs over her shoulder. Laro and his miscreant friends carouse at the tavern, the falls above the Adra Mill, and the southwestern bridge. If you see him, tell Laro to get his good for nothing ass back home. Well, we do have this thing with chasing a rogue god to the ends of Aora, but I guess if it's on the way. Hmm. The Valera stayed? Bardato estate. I'll get it open. Done. Okay. Pick the place clean. Uh, what else? What else do we have here? Seraphim, thought we agreed you'd stay out of my head. I weren't in your head, lad. You think like an ogre snores. Would be a fool and an half not to make sure them thoughts ain't full up of trouble. What do you think you're gonna find? Nothing particular, just uh, anything. Who are these people? Enjoying the show? Please, sir, a coin. The child moves closer and tucks at the hem of your garments. In the midst of this pitiful gesture, the urchin's hand discreetly dips into your coin purse. You have lost one capper, a copper. Blade of hand, not met. <laughs> Grab her by the arm. Mm. 
child's eyes widen in panic, spurring a brief and fruitless struggle to escape. Let me go! I'll give it back! Please! Hmm. Next time, find someone distracted who hasn't got their bearings yet. You hear? The urchin gives a panicked nod and scurries away. Who are these? That's close enough. The young girl narrows her eyes and reaches for a dagger tucked into her back pocket. Say nothing. You're just gonna stand there. She slowly drops her hands to her side and breathes a sigh of relief. Can't be too careful. Queen's birth has an edge to her. What's a kid like you doing on the streets of Nekitaka? Nothing, Ali. I've never had a roof over my head longer than an evening. She cocks an eyebrow at you. I guess cutting me loose was cheaper on my parents than a passage back to the Republics. Or a few bites of bitter squash. Uh, give her an egg. You look like you could use it. Agrasima. She takes the egg in both hands and gently nestles it into a pouch. That'll staunch my pains for an evening at least. Go well. Mm, poor kid. On it. Passers by have etched a varied selection of raunchy poetry and crude um, drawings into the brickwork here. And who's this? Well met, stranger. If you feel like investing in protection, I'd be willing to trade iron for copper. The armorer presents you with a friendly smile. Your selection is fine, but I'm looking for even better equipment. I assure you that everything I sell is well crafted. But I will admit I'm not quite the weaponsmith that Marihi is. Nor do I possess Uto's expertise with firearms. Marihi, you can find in Periki's Overlook, the district to the north. Udo has a shop in the Brass Citadel, in the eastern part of Nekitaka. Let me see what you have. Lots to see. Take your time. Some helmets? Oh, for 10,000. <laughs> Perception, resistance to resolve affliction. Okay. Hmm? Okay, okay, I don't have that much coin right now. Will do. Broken bottles litter the cobblestone of this narrow street, the air is thick with the reek of dogs. Dogs game. Okay. Who are these fellas? Gambler. Osa. Care for a fish or two, stranger? Today's catch. Ripped straight from the hands of the soulry winch. The fishmonger lets out an accomplished sigh. Let me see what you have. You'll find no fresher. Have a look. Okay. Fish. Increases the ship morale, okay. Paddlefish. I would need more um, beverage. Ooh. I think I still have quite a lot of food. Um, well, I have more food than I have to drink. Really. Hmm. I 
definitely need more to drink. I've got it. Amid the barrels and boxes are crates stamped with the symbol of the Royal Dead Fire Company. A strong musky animal smell clings to the straw bedding. The Dora must think I work for free. Who's this one? Be with you in just a <sighs> almost had it. Damn your eyes. The sun scarred wolf gingerly picks a splinter in his thumb, muttering. Uh, hazard of the work, really. He gives up with a frustrated grunt, shaking his head. Came in on the sloop? I can hammer your ship together if you're apt to pay me for it. The maw bears his teeth and grinds them hard enough to sound over the noise of the dock. Having trouble with a client? Aye. Captain Radora hasn't paid me for her commissioned firepower. Zama pulls at the end of his beard and winces. While I'm up to my nose in debt, the wild mare gobbles up her coin. And now, pirates are holding my feet to the fire over some sham of a deal. Zama winces and tucks hard on his beard in self-administered punishment. If I don't get Redora's payment, I might as well start carving my swallow net. Hmm. Hmm. What kind of deal are these pirates offering? One where I men principy ships and no others. Zamar pulls his hair back from his face with both hands, but it only returns to its tangled configuration. And here I'd have thought a shipwright would be eager for an exclusive contract. In particular, one with clients disposed towards getting their ships shot to shit and shot again. Hmm. Folk like that come by coin easy, only to lose it all again. I'm not sinking my business on the say-so of a pack of puffed-up bilge rats. Bastards are driving away business until I give in. Okay, why haven't you settled with your differences already? Because I've got a backlog of work through the next turning of the wheel. And I'm old, damn it. These hips won't carry me to the mare and back without a fight. In other words, we need to go to the wild mare. Well, that's just fine and dandy. Mare is a right popular place. There are worse favors I could ask. If it gets me a discount on your labor, I could hunt down Redora. You do that? A fair price goes without saying, Cully. Lamar entangles his hand from his beard to link his thumb and forefinger with a wink. It all comes down to blasted pans and pyres in the end, doesn't it? Lamar spits toward the dock pilings and glances back at the work still to be done. I'd like to see your goods. Come take a look. He steps aside to show you the contents of his crate. Holy shit. Okay, junk. No wait. Um Where did it go? Junk. Minimum crew nine. Okay. Galleon. Minimum crew eight. Pool health, sail health, hit chance sixty percent. Hmm. Interesting. So we can buy bigger ships here. If we ever have that much money. So.
You're down for chips instead of ships. I'm down for that as well. Some nice chips. Good and tasty. So we are leaving, we're taking the north road. The north road here. I would say. Hmm. Speeding uh, this one up. It is not as easy as it seemed to turn a profit in Neketaka, but there is opportunity. Have you heard about the commotion at the palace? Of course. Something about Luminous Adra. A giant made of Luminous Adra. All I know is that they're all at each other's throats up there. Someone's coming! Okay, what are you hiding, huh? Against the backdrop of jeering youths, a young woman raises her arms with an air of practiced drama. Before her, two men stand across from each other, mirroring scowl. You both attest that you have made all possible efforts to come to a peaceful... The woman trails off as you approach and you find yourself the sudden target of the crowd's attention. Who is this Nasenale? How many cousins do you have or so? Arrow shuffles. Also glares at Laro and bites back whatever insult he had at the ready. We have business. What do you want? I'm here to fetch Laro and Nara's looking for him. A few chuckles arise from the bystanders and Laro's face flushes with embarrassment. The family keeps you on a tight leash, Laro. Will getting impaled on a Valera blade prove something to them? Watch your words, Of. You want the Juana to know we're dueling? My bad so to the tribals. We should be free to settle matters on valiant terms. Also glances in your direction, Noyes. Small wonder the old empire collapsed in civil strife if this is the valiant way. Yes. And how do your colonies fare, Adira? Also narrows his eyes. Um, Laro, what you say? We are civil enough to kill each other without making an incident out of it. I suppose you have a good reason for this duel. This street thug called my family a warren of corrupt inbreds. But is there a dung heap in all the world that does not have a little Valera cousin scratching through it? Laro opens his <clears throat> arms wide and smiles to the smiling crowd. Smiling crowd. That wolf he calls mother would have us live out our days polishing Bardato silver. Also spits at the ground between them. So resolve um, left. Finally. Hmm. Fine, do what you like, just get it over with. Finoma, I am ready to cross swords if you are Laro. Gelarde. Shall we resume? The duelists square off and tentatively circle each other. Stocky also moves his, uh, with heavy strides while Laro takes precise measured steps. The duelists square off, yeah, yeah, steps. Onlookers gather and press at the edges of the poorly defined arena. Their jeering lowers to expectant mutters. The duelists seconds uh, bring forth their weapons. Hmm. Take the opportunity to study each of the opponents. This. You note the sweat on Lara's upper lip and the furrow of concentration cleaving Orsa's brow. Find a better vantage point to observe the fight. 
You maneuver through the crowd with ease, find an uninterrupted view of the escalating conflict. Once the swords are delivered to their respective bearers, the seconds bag away in melancholy silence. Once the swords, blah, 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 the duelists cross the swords and bow and salute. The tranquil moment ends with a burst of motion. Despite the difference in size, the duelists seem evenly matched. Also, doesn't settle on an established form, but he keeps pace with Lauro's aggressive strikes. Watch a little long. Also in Lauro, Drake fears jabs, giving up any pretense of play, uh, playing to the crowd. A hard downward thrust sends Lauro's braid clattering to the ground. Wow. Without hesitation or an offering to yield, also runs his blade through Lauro's heart. A collective gasp rises from the audience as Lauro sinks to the ground. Okay. No time to interrupt. For laughing anymore, are you, Laro? Also looks down at his bloody work, an uncertain expression crosses his Say nothing. What's done is done. I will take shelter in the estate until this calms down. At least that's one less bardato for us to worry about. Also frowns and signals his intendant to leave. Well, that escalated quickly. So, we wanted to go to... Um, how do we get to the palace? I guess we're taking this way then. Heading up in the city. Principy group notices you walking, approaches you on the street. Well, well, look what's finally washed in the port. The raven stops as the former pirates approach, his fists bald. The heat of his anger flushes your skin and seeps beneath, simmering your thoughts. Hold up, Cap. That be Malnage, the High Queen Sea Devil of the Dead Fire itself, awaiting us like a shark in eight. Mm hmm. Be ready for anything. Always, Cap. His hand hovers near the handle of his weapon. A flash of ice-cold loathing cuts through the heat of Seraphin's anger, threatening to wash you over. <laughs> Let the visions come. Aching shoulders, aching wrists, aching ankles, bound and gagged, the filthy rag in your mouth soaked through and briny, every breath like drowning, hanging from the bow's brit. The rise and fall of swells, um, the sea spray of chilling shock. Malnash shouting from the bulwark. Ignore it, she said. Ignore it and focus, you useless stack of spider shit. Reality rushes back in like an approaching wind. Captain, I've heard a mess and a half about you. Mostly good. Though I see your taste in company could use some refining. The all in gestures to Seraphin with his. Typical, Malnage. Can't match my skill, so you try to spew shit. Boy, when you're as old as me, your skill will still be naught more than the untrained fumbling of an adherent maid to the refined workings of my mind. Sailors backing her chair. What brings you here, Monash? I've heard about your run-ins with Captains Benweth and Ferrante. Meeting the old Principe, he seems like. Almost makes a girl green, the envy of missing the party. She grins, her mouth filled with sharp yellow teeth. I'm tracking a man by the name of Rimaro, traitor to the cause. 
Romaro ain't no traitor, you mind blind sack of squid squirts. The raven growls, fists tight and fur bristling. You feel the anger coil around him and spill outward, and your vision begins to swim. Let the visions come. A sharp strike against your cheek, and your head bits the wood hard. The wet of something rolling down the back of your scalp, clumping in your fur, and Marnosh standing over you, fists balled, a flash like thunder and copper in your mouth. Then an old man, eyes equal, parts kindness and rage, holding her back, shouting her down, turning to you, leaning in, the rage fleeing. The anger slides past and your vision resolves into the Negatagus street. Captain, there'll be a bounty of some 4,000 pounds on Romaro, quick or dead. I'd be willing to cut you a tenth of that, here and now, if you give me any knowledge you might have stumbled across on your travels. Hmm. I wouldn't tell you if I knew. Careful, watcher. You don't want to go making yourself an enemy of the Principe Sen Petrella. Anyone aids our enemy shares their fate, you know? She draws a finger across her throat. Fare thee well, Captain. See you around, Seraphon. She turns on her heels and leads her crew uh, away. Hmm. I guess we can just leave, right? Nothing special here. On this map? No. Let's continue you continue to Periki's overlook. Need future doll? Dark cupboard has fortune box. Okay. Oh, we can pick some flowers. Will you? Quitsley's exotic herbs. Why, hello. Could steal you at your service. She sets down her pruning shears and looks you up and down with a warm smile. Flowers! I can tell that you're new to the dead fire. Maybe you're still getting your bearings? Some of my herbs can help with seasickness or worse afflictions. Um, what makes you think I got here recently? It's nothing personal. You just have that taking everything in look about you. Give it time. It'll pass. She reaches to brush a curl of fur behind her ear. Her gaze wanders towards the raven and lingers there. Then she pulls her focus back to you, blushing slightly. Oh, ain't no shame in looking, lass. <laughs> Flashing a crooked grin, the raven bows to the herbalist. What brings an herbalist uh, to Periki's overlook? Money is the obvious answer, but I don't think that's what you're after. He smiled. Yes, I'm an herbalist, but I also pride myself as a florist. I think the city liked the idea of putting a flower shop somewhere visible. It's ostentatious, really. Probably the same reason why we have a magic shop next door. Pariki's Overlook is a great big splash of culture and innovation, there to show travelers that the Juana are ready for the world at large. She shrugs. Tell me what you have for say. A uh, pathetic carrier's gloves. Um, plus one dexterity, plus two alchemy. Hmm. Interesting. And some roots and uh, other herbs and uh, random sex. Oh. Okay, interesting, interesting. All of this feeling. Okay, let's leave again.
Okay. Okay, you know what? I feel like taking a break here for today. Um going to end the stream here. Maybe there will be another stream um this evening in a couple of hours. But uh, yeah, maybe again the next couple of days. So uh, thank you all for coming. Thank you all for watching and spending your time with me here. And I wish you all a wonderful, wonderful evening and a wonderful weekend if we don't see each other again. So have a nice day. Bring back knock knock. You know, you know, Miss Quaxon, actually. Um, actually, I pretty much, I would like to, to go back to playing Pathfinder a little bit more, maybe someday. Maybe be even before the sequel drops this year. And then we do an evil playthrough. I knew you miss him. Of course I do. Of course I, I miss Knock Knock. So, yeah. Take care, everyone. Bye bye and uh, see you soon. Hopefully. Bye.